This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, beer lovers are in for a real treat as the city's newest brewery releases two new brews. The Methodist Mission steps in to offer high school pupils some hands-on experience in the science industry. And he's a self-made millionaire and owns a racing track. And now he's launched a book. We meet Tony Quinn. Good evening, Dunedin. I'm Rebecca Dupree. A steam train's whistle start sounded across Otago Harbour at lunchtime without a steam train being in the city. It wasn't a ghost train, but a milestone at the city's newest brewery being announced in a way that's close to the founder's heart. Signalling two new brews. Brewery founder Richard Emerson promised he'd blow his AB steam train whistle to signal the arrival of two new beers at the new premises. So today, when he did that, he was as happy as a kid in a candy store. Speaking just before the event, he was practically fizzing. We've got a, a new brewery with a hint of a railway theme in it. And of course we have a thing with them. And I want the to put them to talk to let people know that we have a new beer being released. So hopefully they'll start to think and swirl, oh, mm, a new beer. They'll come down a flat a flagon. Emerson has long been a fan of trains and brought the historic steam whistle off a Vauxhall resident who has told him he heard it clearly. Fortification, one of the two new brews, is a stronger version of one of their popular brands at just over 7% alcohol by volume. The other is a pilsner called Vitumnus after the Roman god of change. Emerson says the new premises is working well and the team are working up to producing 3 million litres of beer annually. Daryl Bazer, 39 Dunedin News. Police have cordoned off the Highgate Dairy in response to an attempted robbery last night. A man entered the dairy wielding a knife and threatening staff, but eventually left empty-handed. Two police vehicles were parked outside the dairy this morning. The entrance was cordoned off as a police emergency with officers inspecting the area. Officers also patrolled the surrounding street, going into neighbouring properties. The offender has been described as a short white male of slim build, dressed in black and carrying a black sports bag. High school pupils with an aptitude for science are getting some hands-on experience. A group of pupils has visited one of the country's leading innovators in the modern engineering arena as part of a program organised by the Methodist Mission. And the program's coordinators are hoping to expand. Blinding them with science. From the classroom to the factory floor. This group of high school pupils visited Scott Technology this week to get a hands-on appreciation of how science can work in the workforce. The scheme is run by the Methodist Mission and its business coordinator, Jimmy McLaughlin, says the Science Works program is helping further educate some of the city's youngsters. The idea behind the program is to give uh, Year 9 and 10 students a really good behind the scenes hands on look at where, where, where science can lead them um, in terms of career pathways um, and hopefully to encourage them to, to get involved with science um, in Year 11 and beyond. He says the organisation is hoping to grow the program. So we're looking to expand the program um, next year. We're, we're funded for uh, the third and fourth term. Um, so we're going to give it a, a, an initial go with, with the four schools that we've got lined up. We're really hopeful um, that with the support of, of businesses like Scott that we're gonna, um, the program's going to be successful and, and we can look to carry it on uh, in the future, increase the number of schools that are involved, uh, increase the number of students and then um, you know, we've had great support from local business so um, really excited about that for next year. McLaughlin says they hope the short course is intensive and hands-on. The initiative is funded by the Ministry of Business and Enterprise and McLaughlin says they're working with pupils from Bayfield as well as Kaikarai Valley College. Darrell Baser, 39 Dunedin News. Heightened police activity has been reported in the High Street area this afternoon. Dunedin police were called to the temporary courthouse on High Street following reports of a man harming himself. 
Police say it's not clear whether the man was due to appear before the court or if he was just in the area. He has since been taken to Dunedin Hospital. The man behind the Highlands Motorsport Park has written a book. Tony Quinn is a self-made millionaire and he was in town to officially launch his new work. Quinn is named as one of the 200 richest people in Australia and he told the expectant crowd he's not finished doing business just yet. Signing his book Zero to Sixty at an official launch, Tony Quinn says it was an interesting and thorough process getting his story on paper. One that took three attempts and three authors to complete. I'm just used to telling stories, but the author, Robert, um, went to great detail and great research to check out, I guess, that the story was authentic, and that impressed me quite a bit. The self-made millionaire owns the Highlands Motorsport Park and has written the No Holds Barred book to record his story for future generations. At the launch, he talked about his love of motorsport and gave tips in building a successful business career. I think that um, if people are looking for money or whatever they're looking for, um, it's everywhere. It doesn't matter uh, what business you choose to do, so long as you're good at it and you focus on it. He sees many opportunities for growth in the region. The thing that I see, particularly in this region, and the opportunity, the obvious opportunity, is the tourism thing. Uh, Highlands has grown each year we've been open, and last year I think we grew about 30%. Although he's not finished growing his business, his passion for motorsport means he'll still be out on the track. And I just spoke to Brian Budd about two hours ago about uh, developing a series in New Zealand with the GD3 in mind. So that's probably where I'm going to end up going, is more towards the... Um, is the management of the categories. I'm still going to race, but not competitive. I don't race competitively now, I just race to enjoy it. His book was released on Monday and already Zero to Sixty is on the bestsellers top ten list for non-fiction. Quinn is now on a nationwide book launch tour. D. Karen, 39 Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, we take a look at what's involved in organising local body elections and budding broadcasters open their mics as part of a nationwide campaign. So August is now winter sale month, up to 50% off. This winter hasn't been cold enough until now, but we have to get rid of all this stock. We've got all these jackets. Also to keep you warm and me happy, at 50% off, we've got all this knitwear. For all of August, we've got great savings on moleskins and jeans. Plus, we've got all these warm shirts. Look at them all, from 50 bucks. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. First in, best dressed. You can bake a difference for the SPCA this Cupcake Day. It's the sweetest way to help animals in need. For more details, go to spcacupcakeday.co.nz. Mobility Solutions Centre Dunedin provides products to improve your independence, comfort and safety. Contact the team at 4777-195 or visit mobilitysolutioncentre.co.nz. have the experience and the expertise to supply a wide range of high quality New Zealand made products and can manufacture customised products to meet your individual requirements. Wooltech, great people, great products, great service. Drive-In Miss Daisy is a safe, friendly and reliable companion driving Hello, service. Hello Jean, where are we off to today? We form genuine friendships with our clients and help them to remain independent. Thousands of Driving Miss Daisy clients and their families love our caring, affordable service. Call us today for a quote on 0800 948 432 or visit drivingmissdaisy.co.nz. Driving Miss Daisy for the gift of independence.
of services for older people, think Enliven. Enliven is a service philosophy where people come first. Enliven is about choice, activity, relationships, respect and security. You can enliven your health, your friendships, your life, no matter what your age. For more information, go to psatago.org.nz or call 4777-115. We need your help to rebuild our animal centre urgently. Please give a little today. When someone is affected by cancer, the Cancer Society is here to help. Please give generously the Stafford all day. With your help, there is hope. Welcome back. Nominations close soon for the local body elections and it's a busy time for the officials, especially those at the helm. Dunedin Returning Officer Pam Jordan has one of the busiest jobs and she joins me now. Good evening Pam. Good evening. Just for a wee bit of background, tell us how long you've been in this role. Uh, I've been electoral officer for, this is my fourth ele election and I was deputy for, I think it was three prior to that. So I've been involved in elections for over 20 years. Wow. What's changed in that time? Well, um, back in the 80s, um, of course, um, local body elections were run much like national elections where there were postal, sorry, there were um, polling booths all over the community and schools and halls and things like that. Um, when 1989 amalgamation came around, uh, it changed to postal vote and all local authorities now mm -hmm. conduct postal votes. And um, also during that time, uh, we've changed from having um, a whole heap of people in the town hall on, on Saturday of election day counting votes, right um, to contracting out our um, vote counting and processing to a contractor and uh, the majority of local authorities do that now as well. Mm. What's involved in coordinating an election? Oh, well, there's quite a lot um, to do in terms mm. of, you know, getting everything ready for um, nominations, preparing information for candidates, nomination forms and things like that. Um, during the nomination period at the moment, um, it, uh, we uh, have all our um, governance support team involved and um, when nominations pick up, as they have done in the last couple of days, um, it's sort of all hands on deck and everyone pitches in to help mm. on that. But um, also, I mean, we're not the only team that gets involved. Our marketing and communications team gets involved in advertising and, um, you know, sort of promotion of the election. Uh, we have our customer services um, agency who deal with lots of um, public inquiries mm -hmm. and candidates' inquiries and things like that. And, of course, um, our planners deal with um, candidate signage inquiries and things like that as well. So um, there's a lot of lot of involvement across the organisation. Mm, and a lot going on. How different is it this year without the SDHB election? Well obviously we've got um, fewer candidates to deal with and uh, once the election comes around um, people won't have that issue on their voting papers to, de mm. to vote for. Now there was a bit of an article in the ODT today about uh, the low numbers thus far of nominations for some posts. Have you had a bit of a flurry today in response? <laughs> yes. Um, that, that could be um, said to be the case. Mm -hmm. um, it was very slow for the first three weeks and I think it was the same across Otago. Mm. And, but um, yes, yesterday and today we've certainly had more candidates in mm. and um, we're expecting more between now and Friday at noon. Yeah. What effect do the regulations have on how candidates conduct themselves? Well, there's a lot of things that candidates actually have to bear in mind um, from who can nominate them to um, their advertising uh, requirements and um, signage and things like that. They have to keep track of their electoral expenses and donations and put in a return at all at the end of it. Um, we provide a candidate handbook with all that information mm -hmm. in it and um, all candidates are able to you know, access that and, um, and um, read up on it. And, yeah. Postal vote this year? It is, yes. Are there any it, it has been since 1989. Yeah. And yeah. that's not likely to change? Uh, no, I, I shouldn't think so in the immediate mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. Online voting's not going to pop up and, and be an option for us at some stage, do you think? Well, there was supposed to be an online voting tr trial this mm. year that some local authorities had um, signed up for. However, the government, just, the government decided not to proceed with it this year in the end. Oh, goodness. Make mm. things a lot easier for some of us. <laughs> and your job potentially a wee bit easier. Mm. Dunedin Returning Officer Pam Jordan, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.
After the break on 39 Dunedin News, the silence is broken at the Central City Library, but for a good reason. And we find out how a Central Otago ski field is keeping skiers safe in an unpredictable environment. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin, available as oil or in capsules, go to www.silverhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today. You can make a difference for the SPCA this cupcake day. It's the sweetest way to help animals in need. For more details, go to spcacupcakeday.co.nz. Drive-In Miss Daisy is a safe, friendly and reliable companion driving service. Hello Jean, where are we off to today? We form genuine friendships with our clients and help them to remain independent. Thousands of Driving Miss Daisy clients and their families love our caring, affordable service. Call us today for a quote on 0800 948 432 or visit drivingmissdaisy.co.nz. Driving Miss Daisy for the gift of independence. Pregnant, need to talk, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. We're a 25 Moro place at Dogwood Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced, sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Mobility Solutions Centre Dunedin provides products to improve your independence, comfort and safety. Contact the team at 4777-195 or visit mobilitysolutionscentre.co.nz. So August is our winter sale month, up to 50% off. This winter hasn't been cold enough until now, but we have to get rid of all this stock. We've got all these jackets. Also to keep you warm and me happy, at 50% off, we've got all this knitwear. For all of August, we've got great savings on moleskins and jeans. Plus, we've got all these warm shirts. Look at them all, from 50 bucks. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. First in, best dressed. We need your help to rebuild our animal centre urgently. Please give a little today. When someone is affected by cancer, the Cancer Society is here to help. Please give generously the Stafford all day. With your help, there is hope. Tune in on Thursday for Motorsport Night on Dunedin Television. Welcome back. Silence was broken at the Dunedin City Library as a group of teens filled the airspace with constant chatter. However, it was fully sanctioned by staff and part of a nationwide campaign celebrating Community Access Radio. It's a first for the Youth Zone team and was also a chance to let budding broadcasters flex their vocal cords taking over the airways. And welcome back to Otago Access Radio 105.4 FM and we are live from the team. Readers space. at the Dunedin City Library retreated to a live radio show as part of the nationwide campaign, The Big Listen. This was the first time the Youth Zone team have broadcast from the library, the team space proving the perfect location for the budding broadcasters to deal with their new types of pressure keeps them on their toes, you know, there's a live audience when you're in the studio, you know, you could imagine people aren't there, but <laughs> this time we had some bean bags and um, suits set up, so, you know, it's a bit different and they gain skills from it as well. The station is proving to be a stepping stone for many young enthusiasts. There are 12 community access radio stations in New Zealand, each of them providing training facilities, enabling anyone to make their own radio program. But I've also had the opportunity to interview people as well, and that's, that's really cool. Um, interviewing different people, seeing where they come from, uh, seeing what they do. 
It wasn't all just interviews, with the audience being treated to a mix of presenting, discussions and of course some music, with a special live performance. A big focus of the event is to connect with the wider public. Well, I really like when people are um, really passionate about getting what they love on the radio. So I really like running with people's ambition and you know their passion for something and then you know seeing them accomplish stuff. The event has hopefully sparked new passion for broadcasting in some of the crowd. Otago Access Radio will look to get out and about more to inspire their next big on-air talent. Henry McMullen, 39, Dunedin News. International technology and satellite tracking systems are just some of the tools the South Island ski field uses to keep safe. And with thousands of lives at stake, ski field staff say it's important to keep on top of the mountains forever changing conditions. More than meets the eye. That's what's involved in the day-to-day -day operations on a ski field with the monitoring and controlling of the snow available on the mountain. Cardona Ski Field is utilising the French and German Snowsat system to do this. Installed last year, the system uses detailed maps of the snowfield, with the trails layered over the top to show how much snow is on the fields. Snow and Terrain Manager David Collette says it's accurate to around 2 to 3 centimetres. It's about managing the snow and I think it's about managing costs and not over making snow because to make snow is expensive and we can go on there and go right we don't need to make snow here anymore whereas in the past we'd have just keep guns going for the sake of it not knowing what was in there and it is it's coming into springtime going okay we need to make more snow in these areas because we want to get through to the end of the season. The state of the art machines are each worth around $500,000 and have operating costs of about $250 an hour. But Colette says the Snowset system has already paid for itself. With the operating you can track where the machine's been all night long, how much fuel it's done, been burning, and when services need done. So, you know, it's just a, an ongoing sort of um, tracking system of the machines and the snow, really. Ten operators work 12 to 13 hours per day and into the night to keep the fields groomed and the roads safe. Colette and the team move snow around the mountain and sculpt out the best possible terrain for visitors, working with naturally made snow and the more expensive man-made snow. The team work all year round, sculpting the earth in the summer and working with the snow in the winter months to offer the best and safest experience for visitors. Darrell Baser, 39, Dunedin News. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. A train whistle rang out this afternoon to signal an all aboard for two new releases at the city's newest brewery. A scheme coordinated by the Methodist Mission is gaining traction with businesses as they host keen science students. And self-made millionaire Tony Quinn launched his new book in the city last night and already it's on the bestseller list. And now it's time for local weather. This 39 Dunedin News weather update proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorn's Emu Oil. And here is our city view, it's taken of the entrance to the Botanic Garden. On a beautiful sunny day, albeit cool, 7 degrees recorded in the central city, 9 at the gardens and 12 out on the Tyree. To the situation and an anti-cyclone is moving across the country now and it's responsible for those beautiful blue skies. A milder northerly flow though will develop from Thursday with a cold front moving over the south on Friday. To the forecast for the main towns in the lower south for tomorrow, fine for Invercargill, Gore and Alexandra. Northwest is for Tiana with some high cloud and a high of 8 degrees. And it's a fine one for Queenstown, Omaru, Wanaka and Twizel, highs of between 4 and 8 degrees. And Dunedin tonight remaining fine but frosty with an overnight low of minus 4. Tomorrow fine with light nor east as a high of 8 degrees. And on Thursday high cloud increasing, northerlies freshening, some rain at night and a high of 11. To the Otago Pallet Fires tidal and fishing information, high tide tomorrow morning is at a quarter past 9, low tide follows at 10 to 4. And fishing conditions are looking fair tomorrow, the best time to have your line in the water is just after 6pm. And that's all from the team here at 39 Dunedin News for Tuesday. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.
This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.